Good morning. It is so great to see you all this morning. And I'm just here to give you a few announcements. So the first one is our J21 Hub. We now have 69 students registered. We have one spot left for our middle schooler. So we are really, really excited. God has so provided for this with the teachers and the leaders and the volunteers. It's just been pretty amazing to watch him work. Um, you know, that first day on September the 8th, if you're not busy, we'd love to have you just come lend us a hand. You know what the first day of school is like, getting everybody to their right place. So we'd love to be able to help. If you need any information, just give me a call. Also, we have a Men's Alliance Night coming up on Friday, April the 28th at 5 p.m. So the men have been doing a lot, like going camping with the guys and exercising, lots of fun stuff. But this is a chance that they want to invite the whole family out. So bring a side dish, bring a dessert. If you have cornhole bowl boards, bring those, and we're just going to have a night of fun. For more information on that, you can call the church office or you can contact Jim McMahon. Also, we've been invited to partner with Camp Hanover for a work project September the 28th, 22nd through the 25th. Um, there's a bridge that needs to be built there. So that would be Bill Fisher if you need more information on that. And we are also starting back with um, moving on after moving in this fall. We are going to switch dates up, and we're moving that until Sunday afternoons from 2 to 4 at the Pavilion. Liza's still in charge of that if you need any information. And this coming Wednesday night will be our last prayer meeting at the Pavilion at 6.30. We had a fabulous Wednesday night last week, so we hope you can join us for that. And then youth group meets tonight combined at 5.30 at the Pavilion. So Pastor David is on vacation this week, and Marina is going to present her message to us in just a little bit. So this is your chance to stand up, and I, I don't know, we always do a different greeting, so just stand up and give thumbs up to your friends, all right? Good morning. Let's remain standing for the call to worship. We gathered this morning here in the worship center and also via electronic means to worship our God, a God who has said that where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I among them. No matter where we are, we are God's children and he is watching over us. Let's welcome God into our presence this morning as we worship the risen Lord. Now please join me in the opening words of worship. As one body, we have many members, each uniquely gifted for a particular purpose. We are one nation, are one body in Christ. Prophets and poets, thinkers and teachers, artists and advocates, counselors and caregivers. We are many, are one body in Christ. With thanksgiving, we offer our varied gifts in service to Christ, who makes us one. Now let's continue with our two hymns of praise. I think you got these backwards. We'll use a thousand tongues to sing, Lord, I lift your name on high, but we'll reverse the order. Lord, I lift your name on high, and then a thousand tongues to sing. No, you're right, Nancy. Go ahead. I know. <laughs>
please join me in prayer. Eternal Father, we feel you with us today. Your power and majesty are all around us. In this season, you provide us with signs of your power, wind, rain, thunder, lightning, and hundreds of other visible and audible signs of your presence. Your creation is beyond our comprehension at times, but you display your love for us daily, a love that is above all other love. We receive your abundant mercy and peace, gifts to us that only you can give. Your land yields all of the things we need for our lives. You fill us with the joy and peace of believing, and we sing your praises and serve you with all of our abilities in order to praise your glory. Thank you for your love and mercy. Amen. And join me, please, in the unison prayer of confession. Merciful God, Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? We call him the Son of the living God, but we do not always trust that he is at work in the world now. Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? We confess he is the Messiah who delivers us from life to death, but we doubt his power to transform our lives. Jesus asks us, who do you say that I am? We profess he is the Christ, the Lord of our lives, but our attention often wanders and our loyalty is tested. Forgive us, help us not only to proclaim you, but to follow your way of mercy and peace. Amen. In his second letter to the Corinthians, Paul writes, God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We honor God in many ways, one of which is to return to him a portion of our many gifts that he has provided to us. Under the current circumstances, many of us are donating online or by mail, but we still have collection plates by the doors you leave. Now join me in prayer as we dedicate those gifts, however received, to God. Lord, we ask you to bless these gifts given by your people for your kingdom. Provide those who will distribute these gifts with your wisdom. We trust in your judgment and in your everlasting love for us. Amen. And now let's stand for a hymn of dedication, The God of Abraham Praise.
Thank you, Nancy. Good morning. morning. Hope you all are doing well. I'm so excited to speak with you all and share a message that I feel the Lord has laid on my heart. So I hope you have your Bibles where you can follow along on the screen or if you have your phone. We'll be doing a lot of scripture reading this morning. So our first scripture reading comes from Exodus chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, and then we'll read 13 and 14, that same chapter. Exodus chapter 3 says this, Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within the bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight why the bush does not burn up. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am. Do not come any closer, God said. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. Then he said, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. At this, Moses hid his face because he was afraid to look at God. Now, after God will tell Moses that he's heard the Israelites uh, cry to him, uh, God tells Moses, I'm going to send you back to the Pharaoh, and so that's what we'll pick up in verse 13. Moses said to God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Our second scripture reading comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 35 through 42. The next day, John was there with two of his disciples. When he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. Turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, what do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, Jesus replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and spent that day with him. It was about the 10th hour. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said, who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah, that is the Christ, and he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which is translated as Peter. God never changes. God never changes but God is constantly changing. Now, before you call an emergency session meeting or get Pastor David on the phone, let me briefly explain to you uh, what I mean when I say that God never changes, but God is constantly changing. See, in the scripture passage that we just read, God reveals his name to us, I am who I am. See, in Hebrews chapter 13, it says that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So when Moses asked God, what is your name? And God says, I am who I am. The beautiful thing about Hebrew is that that phrase, that name is translated in the past, the present, and in the future tense. So in that moment, God was not just saying, I am who I am, but God is also saying, I will be who I will be. But God makes it simple. He's like, you know, Moses, just tell them, I am has sent me to you. I am the same yesterday, I am the same today, and I am the same forever. See, in that moment in Exodus, God is emphasizing that he will never change. And how amazing is it that in the Gospel of John, Jesus himself said that before Abraham was, I am. So what does this mean? Well, this means that who God is, the characteristics, the essence of God will never, ever change. So who is God? Who is this great I am? 
Well, let me remind you who this great I am is. See, after the first, the, time, the first time that Moses wrote the ten, ga- 10 great commandments and he broke it when he saw the Israelites worshiping the golden calf, Moses will write it down again. And in that moment, it says in Exodus chapter 34 that God stood in front of Moses. How amazing is that, that God, the great I am, stood in front of Moses and he reveals to Moses exactly the characteristics and essence of who he is. In Exodus 34, verses 6 and 7, it says, And God passed in front of Moses, proclaiming, The Lord, the Lord, the compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness, maintaining love to thousands and forgiving wickedness, rebellion, and sin. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children of their children for the sin of the fathers to the third and fourth generations. So who is the great I am? The great I am is merciful. He's gracious. He's slow to anger. He's abounding in love. He is faithful. He is forgiving. But he's also just. This is the great I am that we are worshiping this morning. And because God never changes, because God never changes, God is constantly changing. God is constantly changing you, me, and the world around us. God is constantly changing us because he wants us to know how he is a God who never changes. And not only that, he wants us to share with others that he is a God who never changes. But are we allowing God to constantly change us? Are we allowing God to constantly change us? Last October, so October of 2019, I took the youth on a fall retreat. And the theme of that fall retreat was devoted. We looked at the two great commandments, but focused on the first one, which is to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We looked at stories from the Bible and individuals from the Bible who exemplified for us how to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. I challenged the youth with a phrase, which is, God's interruptions are for divine intervention. I challenged the students to see where is God interrupting in their life and to respond to his divine intervention. Why? Because God never changes, and therefore God is constantly changing us. So now fast forward, March of 2020, when everything begins to shut down. One day I'm at a soccer game for one of the students, and the next day we're stuck at home. My life, just as everyone's life in this room, in the whole entire world, has now been interrupted. And my mind went back to October of 2019 with that same phrase. And I began to ask myself, is God interrupting us for a divine intervention? In what ways and how does God want to intervene into our lives? See, the Bible is clear that God never changes. But the Bible is also very clear that God is constantly changing us. God is constantly changing us because the great I am is faithful to his word and promises. The great I am is faithful that he will give us a new heart. The great I am is faithful that he will make us a new creation. The great I am is faithful that he will give us a new identity, one that is a child of God. The great I am is faithful that he will change us. And so this may come in so-called normal ways through prayer. When you spend time with God, he will change you. Through the reading of scripture, when you're reading a story and it catches your attention or it, it convicts you or challenges you or encourages you, he may do this through a sermon. God may change you through a person whether it's your spouse, a friend, a family member, your Bible study leader. But God may also do this in supernatural ways, through a burning bush like he did with Moses, through a dream, through a vision, 
Or what about through this global pandemic? See, in the beginning of this global pandemic, when the whole world was basically shut down, I felt like we all were seeking after God, trying to understand what was happening around us. And I believe with all of my heart that God changed people and was changing people during the quarantine. And I know and believe that God changed us in this room. But here's what I also believe, that God is not done changing us because God is constantly changing us. Here we are, a few months have gone by and things are beginning to open up again. We're no longer in a lockdown, but instead we find ourselves in new tensions. We still have COVID-19 tension. We now have a racial tension. We now have a mask tension. We now have a school tension. We now have a travel tension. Should you go to this destination or not? We now have a planning tension. Should you plan for this event or not? Which leads me to believe that it's through these tensions that God is wanting to change us. But again, the question is, are we allowing God to change us? Are we giving God room, priority, and attention to change us? Are we, allowing, are we giving God room, priority, and attention to speak to us, to reveal himself to us? Are we giving God room, priority, and attention to use us, to challenge us, or to encourage us? The first scripture reading came from the Gospel of John, and we looked at Simon Peter's life. See, scholars believe that Peter really wanted to be a disciple of a rabbi, but he wasn't smart enough, which led him to be uh, working in his father's business as a fisherman. See, because we know that God, uh, God will never change, but he's constantly changing us, and that first encounter that Simon had with Jesus, God changed him. He said, Simon, son of John, you will be called Cephas, which means Peter. See, Peter doesn't quite understand what that really means, so he goes back to fishing. But because we serve a God who will always change us, Jesus meets Peter for the second time and changes him yet again. He says, Peter, you will no longer be just a fisherman, but you will be a fisher of men. And thank God we serve a God who is constantly changing us. Because in Jesus' ministry, he will change Peter yet again. He would tell Peter what, it really, what his name really means, that he will be the one that will jumpstart the church. Peter the rock. The gates of Hades will not overcome the church. Peter's the one who's going to start the church. And because, thank God, we serve a God who will always change us, P Jesus meets Peter yet again in John 21. After Peter denied Jesus three times in that conversation of John 21, Jesus reminds Peter of the great I am, that faithful, loving, compassionate God. And he's going to, in that moment, change Peter yet again to remind him, to tell him, to change him about what it means to be a leader in ministry. All of this to lead up to Acts chapter 2 in which Peter boldly proclaims the gospel, and 3,000 people get saved, and now the church has begun. God never changes, but God is constantly changing us. Are we listening? Are we seeking? Or have we forgotten the essence of the great I am? Have we forgotten who the great I am really is? Have we forgotten that we serve a God who is constantly changing us and those around us? If so, then let me remind you very quickly who the great I am is. The great I am is the one who changed Abram, a man who was childless, to be Abraham, a man who becomes a father to many nations. The great I am is the one who changed Joseph, a man who was so bold about his dreams, to change and become a man who will now learn how to respond to those God-given dreams and visions. The great I am is the one who changed Moses, a man who escaped his old life because he murdered someone, to be changed into a man who will return to that land that he escaped from to set the Israelites free and would become one of the most important prophets in the Old Testament. The great I am is the one who changed Jacob, a man who was a trickster, to a man who will have 12 children that will represent the 12 tribes of Israel. Or what about the characters in the New Testament? 
Well, the great I am is one who changed the woman at the well, a woman who was so ashamed at her life that she would hide from her community. The great I am changed her to be a woman who will run back to that same community she was hiding from to preach about Jesus as the Messiah. The great I am is the one who changed Mary Magdalene, a woman who had seven demons, to be changed and be cleansed from those seven demons and be the first woman to see the resurrected Savior and preach about it. The great I am is the one who changed Saul, a man who so desired and persecuted to, to kill the early church, to be changed to a man who will write half over half of the New Testament and be the one who will grow the church. The great I am is the one who changed the Ethiopian eunuch. I mean, who just wants to know what Isaiah 53 meant. He'll be changed to a man who no longer just works in a palace, but will now work for Jesus Christ. God never changes. The same great I am who changed these men and women is the same great I am who wants to change you, me, and the world around us. But again, are we listening to the ways that God wants to change us? Are we obeying in the ways that God wants to change us? Are we even asking God to change us? We're living in so much tension. We're living in so much division. COVID-19, the mask tension, the racial tension, the school tension, the travel tension, the planning tension, the political tension. And I don't know about you, but our nation needs healing. This division is not the heart of God. God wants us united. God wants to bring healing. See, in Exodus... God says, I heard the cries of the Israelites, and that's why I'm sending you, Moses. God wants to send us to bring healing. God wants to send us to show people the great I am. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 12, it says this. God says, this is what God says. God says, I have heard your prayer, and I've chosen this place for myself as a temple for sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens that there is no rain or command command locusts to devour the land or send plague among my people, if my people who are called called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. I have chosen and consecrated this temple so that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will always be there. Church, this is not the time for us to be comfortable. This is not the time for us to stop praying. God is saying, if my people, if my people will seek my face, will pray to me, will turn from their wicked ways, then I will heal their land. God wants to change us so he can use us to heal this land. We are 20 inches away from letting this place be a place of sacrifice. Letting this house of God be a house of sacrifice. What do we need to sacrifice for God to change us? We are 20 inches away from humbling ourselves for change. We are 20 inches away from allowing God to use us to bring healing into this land. We are 20 inches away from the great I am to meet us and use us in unexpected ways. We are 20 inches away. What do I mean mean by 20 inches? 20 inches is from your knees to the ground. It's us going down to God and saying, God, I come before you humbly, saying, I don't know what to do anymore. I don't know how to respond anymore. 
We're 20 inches away from meeting the great I am and saying, God, I'm seeking your face, asking you to guide me and to lead me and to use me because I know you're not finished with me or this land yet. We're 20 inches away asking God to meet us, to change us, to use us, to bring revival. We're 20 inches away from asking the great I am to use this church to be a light in our community. People are hurting out there. People are scared out there. People are hopeless out there. They have no peace out there. We're 20 inches away from asking God to open our eyes, to open our hearts, to help us be boldly proclaimed, help us to love people, to give that peace to people, to give that hope to people who are so hungry for it. We're 20 inches away from meeting that great I am who met Moses in that burning bush. The great I am who's coming back again. We're 20 inches away from seeking his face. Take those 20 inches and ask the great I am to meet you, to change you, and to use you so we can bring healing into this land. So Jesus, we come before you, God, humbly seeking your face. We ask you, God, that you will change us, God. I ask, Lord, that you convict us of any wrongdoing, Lord. I ask, God, that you give us the boldness or you give us the, the encouragement, God, to obey with what you're calling us to do. God, I pray, Lord, we seek your face, God, and we ask, God, that you will send us out into the harvest field. Send us to those who are broken, to those who are lost, to those who don't know that you are slow to anger, abounding in love, that you are compassionate, that you are faithful, that you are a faithful, faithful, loving God, that you are a merciful God. God, help us to every single day take these 20 inches to draw closer to you, to humbly seek your face, to pray to you, God, and that you will forgive us and help us turn from our wicked ways. Lord, that you can use us to bring healing to this land. Will you send revival and use us, God, to send revival to this land? In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Please stand so that as Christians we can declare what we believe. Please join me. Life in Christ is life eternal. The resurrection of Jesus is the sign that God will consummate the work of creation and reconciliation beyond death and bring to fulfillment the new life begun in Christ.
Thank God we serve the great I am. Amen? Amen. Isaiah was just a man, but then God changed him to become a prophet. In Isaiah chapter 6, God changes him yet again, but God asks the question. He says, who will go? Who will go? And Isaiah said, send me and I will go. So I challenge you again, take those 20 inches, ask God to change you so that he may send us to bring healing into this land. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you, make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Amen.